All right, folks, I've got something interesting for you today, something of an AI world underdog story. If you've been keeping an eye on AI image generation, you already know who the heavy hitters in the field are. Midjourney, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion. But hold on, guys, because there's a new player in town, and it's called Flux. Let's talk about it. So, where to begin? First, some context. Over the past few years, AI-generated art has exploded, with tools like Adobe Firefly, Midjourney, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion all vying for the top spot, each one upping the ante with the latest updates. But now a fresh contender has stepped into the spotlight, and it's creating quite the buzz. Well, picture this, you're scrolling through your social media feed and stumble upon an image so lifelike you bet it was a photograph. But then something makes you pause. Maybe the text on the lanyard looks a bit wonky or the background pattern seems slightly off. That's when it hits you. You're not looking at a photo, but an AI-generated image, and it's so close to reality that it's almost unsettling. That's Flux, and it's slowly climbing its way out of the AI uncanny valley. Basically, Flux is an open-source AI image generator being developed by Black Forest Labs. Now, if that name doesn't sound familiar, maybe this will. Some of the team behind Flux used to work at Stability AI. Yep, the same people who brought us Stable Diffusion, a major player in the AI art scene. But that's not all. Black Forest Labs is also working on a text-to-video model that promises high-quality output. And, like Flux, it's going to be open-source. They're branding it as state-of-the-art text-to-video for everyone. And with $31 million recently secured in a financing round backed by the tech giant Andreessen Horowitz, it's clear they're not messing around. According to their homepage, their next big release will be a model called Soda, set to be available to everyone. Meanwhile, OpenAI's video generator Sora has been out for six months but remains exclusive to a select group of testers. Now, folks, let's dive into what makes Flux stand out. First off, it's open source, meaning the code is available for everyone to tweak, modify, and integrate into their own projects. This offers a ton of flexibility for developers, hobbyists, and even small businesses that might not have the budget for pricier proprietary tools like Midjourney. But here's the kicker. There are actually three different versions of Flux. First up is the Pro version, designed for commercial use. This is the heavy hitter, the model tailored for companies looking to incorporate top-tier AI image generation into their products or services. Then there's the Dev version, which is a solid middle ground. It's still powerful, but not as robust as the Pro version, making it ideal for projects that don't require full-scale capabilities. And lastly, there's the Schnell version, Schnell means fast in German, and it lives up to its name. This version can generate an image in just two or three seconds. It's the lightweight, quick-performing model, perfect for those who need rapid results without the need for a super-powerful machine. Yet another feature that sets Flux apart? It can run on surprisingly modest hardware. If you've got a reasonably powerful laptop, you're all set. You don't need a supercomputer or a cloud service to get Flux up and running. This is a significant departure from what we've seen up until now, as it makes high-quality AI image generation accessible to a much broader audience. Now, folks, when it comes to realism, Flux clearly sets itself apart as a front-runner. Like I mentioned earlier, the images it produces are so lifelike that it's almost unbelievable they're AI-generated. In fact, some are even calling Flux the new king of photorealism, especially when paired with something called LoRa. LoRa is a fine-tuning script developed by a group called XLab, and when you combine it with Flux, the results are absolutely stunning. We're talking about images that are so detailed, so accurate, that at first glance, you'd have a hard time distinguishing them from actual photos. But as with anything, there are some caveats. If you start to really scrutinize these images, you'll notice a few signs that give away their AI origins. Text is a major clue. Flux still has a bit of trouble rendering small text perfectly. So if you spot something like a lanyard or a sign in the background, the text might seem a little off. Patterns and textures can also be a little quirky, and occasionally elements in the image might seem slightly out of proportion. It's nothing that completely detracts from the image, but if you're paying close attention, well, you'll catch it. And then there's the issue of skin textures. As impressive as Flux is at rendering people, it sometimes misses the mark when it comes to making skin look natural. Ironically, it can make the skin look almost too perfect, smoother than reality, which can break the illusion of realism. This is an area where Midjourney, particularly in its latest versions, seems to have a bit of an edge. 
But here's the thing, folks. Despite those minor imperfections, the images that Flux produces are going viral, and it's easy to see why. The level of realism it delivers is nothing short of breathtaking, and it's got everyone talking about the potential applications for this technology. Well, just think about it. Stock photography, advertising, social media content, the demand for realistic images is massive, and Flux could very well revolutionize this entire space. However, guys, while it's amazing to create hyper-realistic images with just a few clicks, there's also a darker side to this technology. We've already seen concerns about how AI-generated images could be used to create fake news, uh, commit scams, or spread misinformation. The more realistic these images get, the tougher it will be to distinguish what's real from what's not. And that's pretty unsettling. And it's something we're going to have to confront as AI technology keeps advancing. But let's not get too caught up in the doom and gloom just yet. There's still plenty to be excited about with Flux, especially if you're someone who loves experimenting with new tech. If you're curious about giving it a try yourself, you've got a few options. If you've got a decent laptop with a good GPU, you can actually download and run Flux locally. There's a launcher called Pinocchio that makes it super easy to get set up. It's a big file, so the download might take a while, but once you've got it, you can start generating images right on your own machine. No need to rely on cloud services or internet access. However, if your computer isn't quite up to the challenge, don't sweat it. There are plenty of online platforms that have already integrated Flux into their own offerings. For instance, Night Cafe, one of the more popular AI image platforms, has added Flux to its setup. This means you can generate images using Flux and directly compare them with images from other models like Ideogram and Stable Diffusion 3. It's a fantastic way to see how Flux measures up against the competition in real time. Now, another platform that's jumped on the Flux bandwagon is Poe. If you're not familiar with Poe, it's an AI model platform that lets you generate images in a chatbot-style format, similar to how you would with ChatGPT and Dolly. It's a different approach, but it's interesting to see how Flux performs in that kind of setting. And if you're a developer, there are even more possibilities. Flux is available on platforms like Hugging Face, which is more tailored for those who want to explore the technical aspects. Freepik, one of the biggest names in stock photography, is also working to bring Flux to its site. So that's something to watch out for. To wrap this all up, Flux is definitely a model to keep an eye on. It has the potential to significantly disrupt the AI image generation landscape, and it's already positioning itself as a serious competitor to established giants like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion. All right, folks, if you found this information useful or intriguing, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any updates. And hey, if you had a chance to experiment with Flux or have any thoughts on the whole AI image generation scene, drop a comment below. As always, great to hear what you guys think. See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.